So how are you guys enjoying Austin? Oh, it's great so far. <laughs> I mean, I, we, I, I got in last night uh, just in time to make the Q&A for my screening. My flight was delayed, but oh it was, uh, it, it's, so far it's been great. I, had, I just hit up a barbecue truck. I had a delicious brisket <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> Is this your first time, by the way? Have you been here before? No, no. I, uh, well, we drove on, on, our, on our big two-week Texas road trip uh, in the film. We drove just through it on the freeway, but. That's right. Yeah. That's, we, we spent a lot of time in Texas shooting the film. It's our first time in Austin, though. So where are you guys from? Uh, Toronto originally, Genesis is in L.A. now. So you yeah, love this barbecue, huh? <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, sure we do. Sure. And it's good for you, right? Sure. <laughs> good. Yeah. Most, most people are not. Uh, yeah. So tell me, I mean, this is kind of a big project, a big documentary to kind of tackle. What made you not only start it, but, you know, keep on with this whole thing? Um, well... We were look, we were looking for uh, another thing to do together after our first uh, our first feature, which is a narrative movie called "You Might as Well Live." And uh, I was kind of interested in making a documentary. I had, everything we had done together beforehand was narrative, um, but uh, I had edited a, a documentary a few years ago uh, about mushrooms, and it, it got me thinking like, oh, this would be a it would be an interesting. Uh, uh, thing to do. So I was just kind of had my ear to the ground for, a, for an idea and I happened to read three random articles about the moon uh, in about the course of the week. One of them was about Dennis Hope, the fellow in the movie who owns the moon and has been selling it for the last 30 years. Uh, one of them was about the moon in ancient religion and one of them was a more scientific based kind of thing and I just thought like wow there's so many different ways that we could see the moon. So that, that was the original idea. It was just going to be going through history, science, art, culture, religion, everything. All the different ways people had seen the moon. But as I met all of these great people we were interviewing, I became a lot more interested in their own creativity and their passion and their inspiration. So it became less about the moon and more about the people. Um, how many years or how long did you guys take to film this? Um, from the original just idea until like premiering it at the Toronto Film Festival, which is where we had our premiere in September, was about two years. Um, we, we shot for about a year. Yeah, shot and edited at we the same time. We shot and edited the film for about a year, and we did that at the same time. We, we would shoot and we'd edit, and the f that's how the film kind of took shape. You know, usually when you make a movie, you, uh, you have a script and you have a schedule and you go out and you execute it. But this was a movie that kind of took shape as we were making it, so it, it was actually a really satisfying way to make a film. Oh, it was wonderful. Yeah. So you were editing as you were going along? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not really familiar with the with like documentaries, how, how they're done. Neither am I. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems like you get the footage first and then you edit it, so that's, that's interesting. Well, look, this, this, this isn't a, a revolutionary way to make a film. You know, the documentaries do often work this way. Mm -hmm. um, and they do evolve as you make them. That's, that's the nature of them. I think in our case, the, the, the nature of the film really did shift fundamentally, yeah. which, it, which, was, um, which was very exciting. I think it, it worked out well in the end. Um, and it was only when we met Chris, um, who is really the kind of the central figure in our film, that we really figured out what, what we were making, what this movie actually was. Yeah, absolutely. So what was the original starting point, though? Who was your first interview? The very first interview we did, well, actually, the very first shoot that I was on was uh, to the Space Access Conference in, uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, which is, it's not a science fiction convention like the one in the film. It is uh, a conference of professionals working in the commercial space industry as well as NASA, so a lot of rocket scientists, um, people like that, and I thought it was going to be a like wealth of wonderful interviews, and we weren't even fully financed. We just had a little bit of money, and I just kind of went by myself, and it was a complete disaster uh, because it was like the ugliest hotel. I couldn't get a good shot anywhere. There was really loud air conditioning, and each speaker was, at least for my purposes, really boring. It was just these dry presentations about new fuels and how much, how many tons of payload we could get up to low Earth orbit. It could have been a plumber's convention, and there was nothing going on. And I was calling Jonas at night, and I was kind of like, "Yeah, it's we're no, it's I'm sure that there are going to be some good people and whatever." And there was nothing. And then two days in, the elevator door opened, and out walked Chris Carson wearing a vest that said Luna City or Bust. Uh, I asked him what it was all about. He said, I want to go to the moon to live there. And I said, well, I'm making a documentary about the moon and I'd love to talk to you. And he said, yeah, you better. So I spent an hour talking to him and then the next year following him around the country. So from your initial impression of him till the end of the film when you go back and, and watch everything, like how has your perspective of him and, and just the whole um, idea of going to the moon changed? 
How has it changed? Well, I mean, originally, uh, you know, I, as I, I, I just kind of met him, I didn't even know I was going to meet him. So um, I guess like a lot of people, when he first explained to me, you know, what he wanted to do, I, I at first thought, like, oh, is this for real? Like, you want to go and live on the moon? And ha like, how can you do this? But as he explained it to me more and more, I, I got completely swept up in, uh, in the plans. Um, and then over the course of the year, you know, we've become friends and, and now, you know, traveling buddies around the States. So. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm a, I'm, I've become a true believer. I've become a, I've become a guy that wasn't a wasn't really a space guy. I wasn't a space kid growing up. I was a dinosaur kid, and now <laughs> now I'm I find myself being a sort of space advocate to friends, and I have an opinion on like you know all of the new commercial uh, you know space companies and and any kind of NASA mission. And somebody says we should go to Mars, not the Moon. I kind of get angry. <laughs> so. it, it, it's it's not as fun if you don't believe. Yeah, it's just not as fun. So why do you get angry? <laughs> well, because I don't know. Because I'm a moon guy now, you know. Um, uh, I don't really get angry. I mean, I, I just think I, I just think that the moon is the is the best place to go first. Um, you know, it's it's closest. Um, it's only a three day trip, not a six month trip. Um, you know, it's it's. I, I also think that the moon is uh, is the best because. It's so, you know, I mean, we can see it in the night sky. Like Mars, most people can't pick out in the sky, but like the moon is the sort of biggest, brightest, most obvious symbol that, you know, the world isn't all there is. There's this huge, big, vast, wonderful universe out there, too. So I'm very, I'm very pro moon. <laughs> <laughs> you should make t shirts, like, right? <laughs> um, okay, well, I asked him this question. Um, when we grow up, like you said, you were a dinosaur guy, but some of us think, well, maybe, you know, one day we could go to the moon. At what age do you think people kind of stop with that magic, you know, that, oh, we could travel to, to the moon or to space or whatever. When do you think that that ends for people? Huh, I, I don't know exactly, but I mean, hopefully never. I think of anything that should be rekindled, and that's, you know, hopefully a little bit of what the movie does, too. I don't know, when did you become a cynical <laughs> adult? <laughs> More so by the minute. Um, well, look, I think for some people that never goes away, you know? I mean, our, our film is full of people who, who never relinquish that, that, uh, that dream. Um, that's what the film is about, Yeah. you know? So you enjoy the looks on people's faces when you tell them about your film and they're like, oh, you know? <laughs> um, what was I ask? We, we, we like the looks better when they've seen the film. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so did you buy a piece of the, of the moon? Do you guys have property on the moon? I, I am a property owner, as is Jonas. We're next door neighbors. We, we share a backyard on the yeah. moon. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm surprised it was so like cheap. Well, you know, it's, it's like twenty something dollars, right? Twenty four dollars, I believe, with all taxes in. And, and how much land do you get? One acre. One ounce. Oh. Yeah. It's a great investment. It is. <laughs> great investment. Yeah. Great investment. If anything, you'll get more people interested in in looking for <laughs> for properties on the moon. Um, well, um, where are you guys going next after South by? Um, where are we going? I, I think we can't exactly say necessarily because we were just talking. Well, we, we've got. Um, well, first of all, the film premieres April third on Epic, so that's 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 our television premiere. Um, we have a couple stops uh, in the U.S. along the way. We've got a premiere at the Environmental Film Festival in Washington D.C. Um, and we've got we've got a, a whole slew of festivals in Europe and in Asia coming up. Um, so uh, we've got uh, we've got a busy calendar. Yeah, and we've been we've been going since September. September is when we program when we uh, premiered at the Toronto Film Festival. Then we were going all through Canada and uh, at Info, which is one of the biggest documentary film festivals in Amsterdam. We were there in the fall too. So we've been kind of making the rounds for a while now. Have you heard from anybody like from the government or anything that kind of is negative about the film? No, I, I I hope they wouldn't be, but no, I haven't. I like. Do you mean like Men in Black kind of like well, alien like, people or is that? people who are like, oh, that'll never happen or, or <laughs> no, I have no, I haven't. Got, I haven't. I mean, have have you gotten audited I, I, or anything? I, I got some calls from some high-ranking U.S. Yeah. officials. <laughs> <laughs> they they said uh, they said you're being too optimistic, and they they, they tried to shut down the dream. Yeah. Um, and uh, th then I just uh, I just started uh, ignoring the calls. Yeah. No, no, we have we haven't received any calls from that from from high-ranking uh, officials yet. Uh, but that would that would be great press yeah. for the film. Though. Yeah, no, I'd love it. Yeah, if anybody at NASA yeah. wants to wants to come down on us or something, you know. A absolutely. Absolutely. You want to ban your film? 
That's the best publicity, right? That, that, that would be great. That would be great. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.